We had so much fun together the other night, I was hoping we could do it again. From the startled looks the other, on the other girls' faces, I realized that they'd got entirely the wrong idea. Oh no! No, it's not! It's not what it looks like! And not that kind of fun! Girls, please! Asi, what are you doing to me? She tapped her foot impatiently. Are we going out tonight or not? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to... England Exchange. I'm your host, the Birdman. Happens to be overseas in England, known as Sir Falcon. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as always. Um, keep letting me know in the comments. Keep sharing your opinions on the story, what you're seeing here thus far, what you're learning about the characters. I always like to see the opinion of you guys about stuff happening, especially in a very story-oriented game. That being said, we have now found out that we're going after Peggy. And if there's a chance to do multiple romance options, we will go uh, after Ashley as well. I'm not sure if there is or not, but we'll give it a shot. Does it make me a poon hound and a scumbag? Yes, kind of. But not really. Unless I'm dating one of them exclusively, I could date around. You know, it's perfectly fine. If you're exclusive, different story altogether, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I woke up early on Valentine's Day feeling quite lonely. When I was a little kid, Valentine's Day was a fun day, where everyone in class would trade tiny paper cards and candy hearts. You know what? You're right. Valentine's Day was actually really fun as a kid, because you always got those little candy hearts. You would always get one. I would always get a box, and then we would go around the room, and we would trade candies. Even though they're the same exact candies, we would just give them off to each other and be like, Ah, somebody likes me. As a little kid, right? Nowadays, it's either very depressing if you're not dating somebody, and you're the type of person who needs to be in a relationship. Believe me, I have a couple of friends like that that they're really not happy unless they're exclusively dating somebody and it's kind of weird to me like i've always been like you know why do you have to be exclusively dating somebody to you know be happy about stuff but i have a couple of friends like that's kind of weird but it's fine you know everybody's got their own personality and second of all it could be also very expensive because let's be honest here man it's valentine's day you kind of want to go out so hoo hoo the hit on that pocket sometimes could be pretty big anyway i digress it was a lot cheaper and funner as a kid that's all i'm saying but when we get older, it got weird to give valentines to people who were just your friends, and since I'd never been in a relationship, i never gotten a serious valentine. It was hard not to feel overwhelmed sometimes by all the romantic advertising and decoration around NYC. Buildings flash red with hearts and roses, couples posed by the love statue for photographs. Of course, James couldn't be bothered to decorate the hostel for a holiday, so at least there was none of that here. Still, I felt lonely. Jin, Su, and Nene sent me their best wishes by email, but explained that Postage was too expensive, so they didn't bother to mail me real cards. Probably for the best, considering they're going away present. They might think it was funny to send an obscene valentine. Oh, that's right, they sent me the silky panties. Uh, this trip was supposed to be my fresh start at romance. Why was, I still, why was I still alone? That's a very good question, man. Well, I mean, we're going after Peggy, but she might have a thing for Danny. I paced through old messages on my phone, feeling more than a little sorry for myself. There was a quiet knock at the door, and I slid out of bed to answer it. Hey, okay, we got Ashley at least. Happy Valentine's Day, Falcon69. Ashley held a small wrap package out to me. Aww. What's this? I got you a present, Happy Valentine's. Ashley, I had no idea. Did this mean she liked me? I didn't get you anything, I feel terrible. No, no, don't be silly. I don't want anything in return. All I want is your happiness. Everybody should be happy on Valentine's Day. At that point, I realized she had a bag slung over her shoulder, filled with tiny packages. I've got to give presents to everyone else. See you later. So it wasn't because she liked me. It was because she liked everyone. <laughs> I told you. I told you. Don't jump the gun, my man. Well, it was still really sweet of her. It really was. I mean, you know, she's not specifically giving only one gift to somebody. It's to everybody. She's a very nice person, gotta admit, this Ashley girl. Really good looking on the eyes. You know, very easy on the eyes and very nice as well. Really good combination. I shut the door and eagerly unwrapped the present. A small stuffed animal grinned up at me, a bunny with glasses and a red scarf. He looked like a miniature Harry Potter, and I laughed when I saw him. I set him on a nightstand next to my bed and smiled. Thanks, Ashley. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. I came back to my room to pick up a notebook that I had forgotten, and passed by Danny in the hall. His face was dark, an expression I had never seen before on it. He looked furious, but not in a blind rage. He had the eyes of a man plotting a very cold revenge. It was so out of place compared to his normal demeanor that it was almost as if he were possessed. He saw me after a few seconds and smiled. Hey, Falcon69. Perfectly normal like nothing was ever wrong except for the shiver running up my spine. Uh, I have to go. I hurried into my room and closed the door. Whatever was wrong, it had nothing to do with me. I hoped. <laughs> yeah, apparently Danny's turning into like a maniac, a killer here pretty soon. We, the moment that we congratulate him on the game, 
And he was like, don't you ever do that. We should have probably had a hint that Danny was, you know, probably a serial killer in the making here. <laughs> Brendan, oh, is this scumbag here too. I think the only guy so far in the game I like is Mark. He's my boy. Everybody else is kind of like, yeah, this guy's an asshole. Danny apparently wants to kill people. James, he just walks around scratching his ass and never changes his shirt, you know. The only dude here so far at school is Mark. Hey, Falcon69! What do you want? My shift's over, I'm about to leave. Someone just vomited up a storm in the men's room. Yeah, and? Brendan pointed to a mop leaning against the wall. Go ahead, it's your job, isn't it? No, it's not. It is now. He smirked and left for the bar out front. That son of a... I charged after him, intending to give him a piece of my mind. Is everything okay, Falcon 69? Falcon 69 here was just volunteering to take care of the mess in the bathroom. That's so nice of you. Yeah, it is. Sigh. This guy. This guy. Uh, didn't he say that it was the end of his shift? If so, I'd have been like, yep, yeah, sorry bro, I already locked out. I'm out the door. But this guy here, you know? What can you do with this Falcon 69 character? That's not me! He's supposed to be me, but he doesn't act like me. Anyway, pal, hey, hey, Peggy. I'm suddenly happy now, because it's Peggy. I was in the library working on some computer problems when suddenly Peggy ran up to me. Falcon 69, you have to help me. I was catching up on my homework and I lost track of time and I have these chem exercises and I need to, I need the reference book for them and it's an hourly checkout and I'm not done and I could barely follow what she was saying when she started talking this quickly. The rules say that the person can't renew a reference book if they had, they couldn't hog it and then, I mean, they couldn't hog it, I I'm not done and can you please go check on this on your card? I paused for a moment while my brain caught up with all that. Um, I'm not sure that's a good idea. There's usually a waiting list for reference books. If I take it back to the counter, it'll just go to the next person who requested it. Her face fell. But I'm not done. So keep it until you're done, then return it. You'll need another hour, right? The fine won't be that big. Or actually, if you know what pages you need, maybe you should just photocopy them. Then you can take the book back to the next person. She looked at me more distraught and tried to figure out my mistake. Uh, I guess photocopies are wasting paper, but you can recycle them, right? I don't have any money with me. <laughs> I like that we thought that she was angry at the fact that, you know, we're over here, you know, using paper up because of her attitude about, you know, nature and the world <laughs> and being wasteful. But in reality, it's just because she has no money. That's great. That's good. Oh, I reflexively patted my pockets, and but I really, I didn't really have much to spare considering here. Whoa, Ninja Mark, where did he come from? He handed a copy card to Peggy. Get what you need, then bring it back. Without even waiting for a response, he turned and walked back towards the philosophy section. Huh. He's not so bad sometimes. God damn it, Falcon, that was a chance for us to prove to Peggy that we got money too. I mean, I don't think she's really into materialistic things and money. But still, I mean, it's very nice to be like, hey, if you're trying to, like, you know, get into somebody's good graces, oh, really? Let me get that for you. No, 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 it's fine. I, I, I insist. Let me get that for you. You know, it's a, it's a nice little gesture, you know? It shows that people that you are a giving person, which is always a good trait as well. Anyway, I was on my break from work, munching on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, when James came running into, came running at me out of nowhere. Falcon 69. Well, what? Oscar needs tomatoes? Go get him some tomatoes. What? Oscar at the pub? I'm on my break. Well, Ashley hasn't come to work yet, and I just used the last tomato on my sandwich for lunch. So now Oscar's pissed at me, and someone's got to get the replacements. This is an emergency, and if you don't do it, I'll dock your pay. What? Fine, jeez, I'm going. He threw a 20-pound note into my lap and dashed to the restaurant. 20 pounds? How many tomatoes did he want? Better get going. I dashed through the street, heading for a market nearby that I knew sold fresh produce. Hopefully, they'd have enough on hand to... Wade. Was that Ashley? She was talking to three men, but then... Maybe, talking wasn't the right word. They were crowding around her uncomfortably, blocking her from the sight of anyone else in the street. Uh-oh. I did not like the looks of their faces. Was she in trouble? I had a job to be doing, but so did she. I was in... It wasn't like her to be late to work. Ashley was always so conscientious. Let her handle this or jump in. Oh, we gotta jump in, man. If she's over here being crowded by three dudes and it looks very uncomfortable, I mean, we'd be a scumbag to just be like, Oh, well, she's got under control. I'm fine. I gotta get to work. I had to do something. I dashed over to Ashley. Hey, who are you guys and what do you want with her? Falcon69. These are my new friends, Merrick and Jan and Costadin. They're new in town, trying to find a hostel to stay at. 
I've been trying to direct them to the one, but I think they're having trouble understanding me because they keep going some other way. I stopped listening to Ashley because the tallest of the men was pointing at me and making a bunch of different hand motions, rubbing his finger together and then jerking his thumb away. If I gave him money, he'd leave us alone? You've got to be kidding me. What should I do? Ashley was completely oblivious that these men were up to no good. Her trusting nature left her blind in situations like this. Maybe it would be better to tell her what they were trying to do. Or would it be nicer and safer for that matter to just give them what they want and get us both out of there? I doubt I could fend them off of myself and Ashley was probably too sweet even to slap someone, much less fight seriously. But then giving them anything might make them see us as good targets. If, there, if this is like a literal, a legit mugging, I would obviously give them the money. That's, a, that's advice I'd give anybody, obviously. It, money is not worth your life. There is no price that you can put on your life, you know? If somebody says like, hey, give me your money or you're dead, give them your fucking money. Give them your cards, give them your phones. All of that shit is replaceable. Your life, not replaceable. So if this is a legit stick up, I will be paying this man, because <laughs> I don't want to die. I reach into my pocket for the 20 pound note I'd been given earlier and slid it into the palm of my hand. It's nice to meet you. I held my pa my hand out to the man, then he took it. I crushed the money into his palm. As he looked at what I had left in his hand, I grabbed Ashley and pulled her out into the street. Where are we going? We didn't even say goodbye. Trust me, it's better that way. But they're still lost. Our hostel is not what they're looking for. And I hope they never find it. I'm going to the market. I need to get some tomatoes for the pub kitchen. The pub? Oh no, I'm late. I'm sorry, Falcon69, but I've got to go. Thank you for pulling me away from them. Who knows how much longer they'd have kept me. Who knows indeed. I'll see you back at the pub. Great. I'm 20 pounds poor and she doesn't even realize that I rescued her. Maybe it's better that she's oblivious. I guess I'll have to pay for the tomatoes myself. Finally, I dragged a giant crate of tomatoes up to the door. What took you so long? I was almost mugged. I don't want to hear it. At least the tomatoes are here now. There are worse things that could have happened. <laughs> like getting mugged? I wanted to scream but held my tongue. I needed this job and room to live after all. James narrowed his eyes at me. Shouldn't you be working? Your break time is up. With that, he disappeared into the crafty crown. My jaw nearly hit the floor. Some gratitude. And the day was only half over. No! Ozzy in my room in the middle of the night, apparently. This might be going somewhere. Hey, Falcon69. Ozzy burst into my room in almost the dead of night, and I jumped 10 feet into the air. What the hell? What are you doing? Changing your life, that's what I'm doing. It's time to party, Mr. Responsible. So, are you going like that? I blinked. For the first time, I realized Ozzy was made up to the nines and bending over it away. That was giving me a good look straight down her cleavage. And I was not entirely dressed. Does that mean that, you know, she's going to spot the erection here because I'm looking down that cleavage, man? Because if so, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. I swallowed and looked away in an effort to be polite. Don't don't look away, man. Don't don't you dare look away. Uh, where are we going? To the clubs, of course. You haven't seen the nightlife yet, have you? You need a proper guide, someone who knows downtown like the back of her dainty little hand. I'm your girl. She was certainly not my girl. We'd barely spoken in the weeks I'd been living here. All of a sudden, she wanted to take me out clubbing. I have work tomorrow. So do I. Are you just going to let England get away from you because you have stuff to do? She's right. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm definitely going. Get out, get out, put on his put on this shirt. She rummaged through my closet and tossed me something I can only assume she thought looked good. I look good in. With no other reason and not much of a desire to object, I changed my shirt and followed Ozzy as she had let me out to the hostel. What about my pants? What about my shoes? Was I in bed with no pants? Well, I mean that doesn't make sense. I on occasion do like to sleep with just the boxers on. You know, it's comfortable, okay? But you know what? I always have I'm I'm barefoot. I mean, who sleeps with their socks on? This guy just walked out, just putting a shirt on. He's, he's basically walking downtown England, or wherever we're at, London, I suppose, barefoot right now. Not a really good clubbing look, I gotta tell you. Now then, what's a quick rundown? People go out pulling all the time. What they want to find someone to go home with and have a good time together, if you know what I mean. So most people go out to the clubs and pull, and apparently things are different where you're from, and people are way more prudish and all outrageous when girls pull. Or else girls just don't do it or something? I don't get it, but it's less than, it's less like that here, or at least where I'm from. Now I mean, I wasn't the same before and that wasn't fun, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> what is she talking about right now? Girls pulling guys? Is that, is, is that a common thing in England? Yo man, I'm living in the wrong place of the world then. Ozzy spoke rapidly as she strode down the, uh, the stone street. 
How did she go into the giant, or how did she do so in the giant heels she was wearing? I had no idea. I was having a hard time keeping up with her. I'm guessing you're not the pulling type, but if you want the option, it's open to you. I'm taking you to a, more of a dance club anyways. The bars are mostly filled with drunk people. Not that that's bad, but I'm trying to get you to have some fun, not pass out. Let me tell you, Ozzy, sometimes passing out can be fun. That's all I'm saying. She brought me up alongside a line of people waiting by a building. Up ahead, I could hear music leaking out into the street, getting louder and softer as people went in and out. I thought we would be stuck waiting for a while, but Ozzy smiled as a bouncer, and he waved us past. I wondered if he knew her or just thought she was gorgeous. <laughs> Doesn't matter, we're in, we gotta wait. Behind the bouncer was a glass door. Ozzy just stood there and smiled at me. It took me a few seconds to realize she wanted me to open a door for her. Uh huh. I did so and followed her down the narrow hallway. So, if she wanted me to treat her like a lady, was this a date? Or was she just kind of a high-maintenance girl? She seemed to type. Yeah, she definitely does seem to type. She did say I could pull other women, though, so she probably wasn't considering it as a date. Ozzy turned a corner and there we were. And there everyone else was, too. A huge crowd of people mingled around a multicolored dance floor. Smoke filled the room, though whether cigarette or hookah or fog machine, I couldn't tell. Ossie grabbed my hands and led me into the dance floor, where she began dancing rather seductively. A dozen heads swiveled our way, and I awkwardly shuffled my shoulders to the beat. So? Ossie shouted over the brain-rattling music, and I smiled and nodded, not wanting to scream. As the night wore on, more and more men flocked to Ozzy's side. I eventually got off the dance floor and watched them attempt to hit on her, one by one. Hey, how are you? I jumped and turned. An attractive older woman was there talking to... me? I'm good, how are you? Quite well, thanks. I'm Cheryl. Who the hell is Cheryl? Falcon69. She nodded, swirling her drink in her hands. Care to dance? Well, it wasn't quite... It wasn't quite come home with me, but it had that potential. Um, yeah. Sure, should we? Would it kind of affect her chances with Ozzy? I mean, she's dancing with the guys, right? Fuck it, we'll do it. I agreed enthusiastically, and she held her hand out to me. I took it, and she pulled me towards the dance floor. Excuse me? Uh oh Ozzy. Where do you think you're going without your tour guide? I, uh... Sawed off, lady. This one's mine. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ozzy is slamming her territory now. Not doing a good job of keeping him, are you, love? Oh! I'm enjoying the, uh, the, the English female banter here. The lady, Cheryl, huffed and disappeared into the crowd. Oh, damn, that lasted... Not too long. I wanted to go on for a while. Ozzy gave me a look. Oh, what? Never mind, let's just go back. Why should we leave now? First lesson's over. If I let you out of my sight now, you'll get rolled or end up lost in Tower Hamlets with no idea how to get back or face down in the river. Oh. Oh, what was that? <laughs> was I about to get, um, you know, worked or something by that lady or what? Was it a trick? Was it some sort of hustle? Was I getting hustled? I mean, she would know. London people, is that a common thing? A lot of women going out there and just hustling guys out of their money? Or apparently their lives too, if I wind up in the river face down? Anyway, the walk home, oh shit. Can I go back? Here, oh, thank god. Oh, you get to scroll up to go back? Oh, thank god, your game, you make it so easy on me. The walk home was awkward. I basically talked to myself, trying to get Ozzy to open up back up to me. But she was locked tighter than a safe. I dropped her off at her door and said goodnight. It wasn't until I was safe in my room, away from prying eyes, that I considered the possibility... The thrilling, nearly impossible possibility... That Ozzy had been jealous. Well, I could be. Sure, why not? Could be, but maybe she was over there dancing with other guys, I mean... But then again, she was probably dancing with other guys, because I were here when like, Oh, I'm gonna go sit down now at the club and just chill. So I, that could be on me, but still. Ozzy was beautiful, dynamic, and exciting, but there was something strange about her. Occasionally, she could be mean. Really mean. Ashley, this is disgusting. What? What's wrong with it? There's way too much salt in this soy sauce. Why didn't you buy the low-sodium version? I'm sorry. What? It tastes fine to me. No, I'm sure she's right. I'm not a very good cook, really. Some of us still have taste buds, for now. As soon as she saw me, though, her face lit up. Falcon69, I was looking for you. We had so much fun together the other night, I was hoping we could do it again. From the startled looks the other, on the other girls' faces, I realized that they'd gotten entirely the wrong idea. Oh, no. No, it's not. It's not what it looks like. And not that kind of fun. 
Girls, please! Honestly, what are you doing to me? Uh, we're not, we, we just went to a club. We're not what? Honestly, I had no idea. She tapped her foot impatiently. Are we going out tonight or not? <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I'm cool. Sorry, I, I don't think the wild night life is for me. Ozzy rolled her eyes at me and left. What was I supposed to do, man? I felt like I was losing my chances with Ashley and Peggy there. They got the impression I'm over here, you know, getting it on with um, Ozzy. And she wasn't making it obvious that, you know, she was talking about anything else. I mean, did she... She did say nightlife, right? Or nightclub? That's true. But still. They had they had other thoughts, you know, what happens after you go to the club with Ozzy, you know? What happens afterwards? Does the night end just right there? No, it doesn't end right there. Things probably still happen, and I don't want to give Peggy nor Ashley the impression of that, because, you know, that's the, the main girls there. I'm saying? Anyway. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm thinking too much about this. I was walking down the hall when I heard a series of loud bangs coming from one of the rooms. That was Danny's room, wasn't it? What was he doing in there? Oh, I have an idea. He's probably killing somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you. Danny is a fucking serial killer in the making right now. Could have been construction or repair for the hostel, but it didn't quite sound like hammering. More thumps and thuds, as if he were beating on something with his fist. He's He, he beat somebody to death. I told you. He was probably just kicking a football around in his room or something. Oh yeah, sure, you'd think that. Danny's in there killing the hostile people one at a time. Hmm. But there was this time in sixth form. Oh, here we go. At Peggy's words, everyone in the room became intensely focused in the meal Ashley had prepared for us. Peggy didn't seem to notice the disinterest. Steffi was on and on about how she had this horse back at the manor. Seriously, she said it like, the manor, and a saddle with diamonds on it. And we thought she was right a uh, right twad, as anybody else probably would. But then her parents actually brought her horse around, and it really did have a diamond saddle. Titchy little ones, like you'd see on the handbag, right? Either diamonds or rhinestones, but her family was proper flushed, so I think it really was diamonds. Totally bling. I have no idea what she's saying right now, I'll be honest with you. No idea what she's- I mean, I, I think I get the general gist of it, but I'm reading it, I'm going like... What is coming out of my mouth right now? And then this other girl, Dana? Dana? I can't remember. Try not- try to nick it. Not the saddle, the entire horse. She got on when no one was looking and just rode off. Of course, she got herself nicked. Then, the fuzz brought her back, crying all over the place. God, she was the worst. I remember one time she caught on to a boy named Alexander, who was dating another girl in the form. Peggy! I jumped. Peggy stared wide-eyed at Ozzy, who had slammed her fist onto the table. I'm sick of hearing about your sixth form. Do you think any of us care? We don't know these people. We will never know these people. We do not care about these people. Most of these stories aren't even interesting. The diamond saddle was a little interesting. <laughs> oh, Ashley. He's so goddamn adorable, too. Oh, so she's one, she's one for 12. Let's give her a round of applause. Ozzy glared at Ashley, who looked away. I swear, if I ever have to hear about your sixth form again, I'll smack you across the face. Learn to read the room. Maybe if you did, you wouldn't be so bloody annoying. Oh my god, Ozzy is just fucking fierce now. Oh <laughs> shit. You don't mess with her, dog. You don't mess with her. Finished with her tirade, Ozzy grabbed herself another helping of noodles and then took her plate and left the room. Boy, that was mean, wasn't it? Peggy laughed nervously and we avoided her eyes. Wasn't it? She was at a line, wasn't she? A stiff silence met her question. After a few seconds, Ashley squeaked up. She was definitely a little harsh, if you ask me. Right. Peggy fiddled with her fork for the rest of the meal, which didn't last very long. Suddenly, everyone grew ravenous and finished their food in moments, at which point they hastily shuffled out of the room. Finally, it was just Peggy and me, which was partly because I was a terribly slow eater. Hey, Falcon69. Yes, Peggy? Am I annoying? Oh, no! <laughs> You're fine the way you are, a little bit, but I like you anyway. Lie, not at all. Should we, should we be a little bit honest here? A little, but I like you anyway. Let's go for it, why not? Peggy winced. Ouch. Wait, really? You do? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> she instantly realized what we talked and what we said, though. Of course, screw them. Maybe they don't like it. But you don't have to go around pleasing everybody. If you like the way you are, that's what's most important. Do you? Oops. Peggy seems so tough and determined, I never really thought of her as insecure. 
Okay, but are the reasons you don't like yourself legitimate, or are you just being mean? I'm guessing you're being mean. You're kind, smart, energetic, passionate, and all about saving and protecting people. You've got nothing to, fe to feel bad about. Sure, maybe you talk a lot sometimes, but I talk too little. So we balance each other out, right? Hey, She beamed at me. Maybe we're both wrong. I chuckled. She didn't seem upset anymore, at least. Peggy gathered up her things. I should go. Thanks, Falcon69. She took her plate to the sink and thought a thoughtful smile on her face. I guess she'd still think the situation over, and maybe she would make some changes. But at least if she did, she would make them because she wanted to make them, not because Ozzy told her to. Looks like I did good. Hey, alright, good job, buddy. Alrighty, guys, and I do believe we are out of time here for today, so I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like. Um, stick around for the next episode, we'll have that up here pretty soon as well. I think we're doing pretty good towards the entire Peggy route right now. And I think we have a pretty good chance with Ashley, too, so if one of them falls off for whatever reason, we do have a bit of a backup here. I think Ozzy is basically out the door now, along with Jiho, so... We got two other girls that we're going after here, and those are the chances that we have at the moment, so we'll see how this plays out. I will catch you next time.